Hi students, we have to continue the lesson Reproductive Health. Today's topic Medical Termination of Pregnancy. Medical Termination of Pregnancy. That is the termination of pregnancy legally by medical method. You know that one medical method of abortion is voluntary or intentional termination of pregnancy in a non-surgical or non-invasive way. Non-invasive way means nothing but without making any incision, without making any operations. We can do that process. That is called non-invasive way. Not doing any just operations. Non-surgical or non-invasive way. Now you can do that one early medical termination. It is always safe. For about 12 weeks. For about 12 weeks. After 12 weeks it is normally not actually, that is we can say in that sense, it is safe. So, early medical termination is extremely safe for about 12 weeks of pregnancy. 12 weeks of pregnancy and has no impact on women's fertility, doesn't affect the women's fertility. But the abortion during the second trimester is not safe, it is more risky. The reason for that one the fetus is intimately associated with the maternal tissue. So it causes some problems to the mother's life. Even taking away the life of an individual. That's why now the medical termination of pregnancy, the abortion of the child during the second trimester is more risky. Now the government of India legalized the medical termination of pregnancy in 1971 or medical termination of pregnancy. What for? For medical necessity and for social consequences. And that one only they have made it actually legal with the restrictions I mentioned already. So necessity and social consequences with certain restrictions. What restrictions? Such as what we have sex discrimination such as sex discrimination and illegal female feticide on its misuse. To avoid the misuse of illegal female feticide and sex discrimination, the government of India has legalized what we call the medical termination of pregnancy with certain restrictions in 1971. Sometimes you know that one MPP performed by some illegal people or we can say illegally by what we call unqualified quacks. Unqualified quacks means unqualified people. It is not safe. It is unsafe. So if MTP is done illegally by unqualified people, it is unsafe. Even it could be fatal to the life of women. The medical termination of pregnancy that was conducted during the first pregnancy has some what is called serious consequences. So medical termination of pregnancy may have what is called the first medical termination. The first medical termination of pregnancy may have serious psychological consequences. Certain kind of what is called development in the mind of that people, that person, that female. And that is called psychological, that is consequences. After the MTP done, the female has developed certain what is called mindset. It will upset the life of that female. That's why we have serious psychological consequences. After the first termination has been conducted in the case of female. As about the medical termination of pregnancy, it was legalized in 1971 by the government of India. So far, what we have, the necessity, the medical necessity and some social consequences. The social consequences means because you see that when people are doing some sort of what is called illegal female feticide in villages, to avoid this one, they have developed, they have legalized that one in 1971. Okay, that's about medical termination of pregnancy. Now you have to go for sexually transmitted diseases. Now sexually transmitted diseases. Sexually transmitted diseases that is STD are also called venereal diseases. That was a former name. Venereal means referring to the genital organs. The next one reproductive tract infections RTA. All these three are collectively called sexually transmitted infections, STA, sexually transmitted infections. Though we have different names altogether called. 
These diseases are mainly transmitted sexually from a person to a person, from one person to another person, that is through sexual method with the infected partner. But some diseases are also transmitted. For example, we have hepatitis B and AIDS. These are sexually transmitted as well as by sharing of infusion needles, needles with the microorganisms. Okay, medical equipments or medical instruments with the infected persons, blood transfusion, another method. Also from infected mother to baby, for example, syphilis, one of the diseases transmitted from the infected mother to baby. This is called congenital syphilis. If it is transmitted from mother to baby through placenta, it's called congenital disease. Now, people with the age group of 15 to 23 are more prone, ready to accept, more ready to accept. That is called non-resistance, more prone, the meaning for them, more prone to have what is called the diseases. Now we have the diseases caused by either bacteria or viruses or by means of protozoans or by means of fungi. Now here I represented the bacterial STI. Gonorrhea. We will see one by one the name of the positive organism. There is a mode of transmission or we have the symptoms, the incubation period. So gonorrhea, one of the most dangerous what we have the bacterial STI. Syphilis. Then canroid, appearance of ulcers, chlamydiasis, another one. Another one, lymphogranuloma venerum. Lymphogranuloma venerum. These are all the bacterial diseases. We have viral diseases too. Genital herpes, genital warts, hepatitis B, and then what we have AIDS. These are all sexually transmitted diseases by viruses. Then we have trichomoniasis a sexually transmitted disease by a protozoa. And another one by fungus, candidiosis, a sexually transmitted disease by what is called a fungus. Now if you are taking the bacterial, fungal or any other parasitic infections or we can say there is a sexually transmitted disease, they can be treated by means of what we have antibiotic other medicines, bacterial, fungal, parasitic infections which cause the sexually transmitted diseases will be treated easily by using antibiotics and other medicines. But the sexually transmitted diseases caused by viruses cannot be treated. But it can be controlled, cannot be treated, but it can be controlled by using antiviral medicines. Okay, that's about what are the viral diseases. I mentioned about the bacterial STI, the viral STI then fungal STA and protozoan STA, I mentioned here also. Now it is easy to treat the fungal, that is what we have, that is a bacterial and other parasitic infections to treat by using antibiotics or other medicines. But about the viral STI, they cannot be treated by means of what is called medications. They cannot be treated. But it can be possible to control the viral STA through medication. We can control but we cannot eradicate. We cannot just cure it. That is with reference to the viral STA. Now we have normally the use of latex condom greatly reduces the risk of STA but it does not eliminate completely the transmission of what we have sexually transmitted infections. Now how to prevent this STA? Avoid partner, avoid sex with unknown partner or multiple partner. Use condoms. The third one, if there is any doubt, you should consult a doctor for diagnosis and get a complete treatment. These are the three methods how to prevent STDs. Now we have to go for the different sexually transmitted diseases, the causative aging, the symptoms, incubation, etc. I will go through in the form of table of condoms. Now let's see the various sexually transmitted diseases. First one I take the bacterial sexually transmitted infections. I already listed the various types of bacterial sexually transmitted infections. Number one, gonorrhea. It is caused by a bacterium, Neisseria, sorry, Neisseria gonorrhea. What are the symptoms? It affects urethra, rectum, throat. We have sore throat. In female, the neck of the uterus, what is called cervix, is also affected. 
and we have the development of pain and pus discharge in genital tract. Also, while discharging, while urination, burning sensation during what is called urination. The incubation period is 2 to 5 days. What is incubation period? The time of entry of the parasite and what we have, the development of the symptom, the time interval period between the entry of the parasite and the development of the symptom is called incubation period. Now the second one, syphilis, it is caused by a corkscrew shaped bacterium. Corkscrew shaped bacterium. This is the bacterium actually, corkscrew shaped bacterium, Trypodema pallida. Now there are three different stages. Normally syphilis is found only in the case of vertebrates and we have venereal venereal syphilis, then congenital syphilis, if it is transmitted from infected mother to just the baby through placenta, then it's called congenital syphilis. Now the primary stage. Now during the primary stage, we have painless ulcer, formation of what we have small blisters on the external genitalia, on the external genitalia. Now the secondary stage, we have skin lesions, rashes, swollen joints, one of the major symptoms, swollen joints, fever and then hair loss. So these are all the symptoms that develop during the secondary stage of development. But we have more consequences during the tertiary stage. Chronic ulcers, lasting forever. Chronic ulcers means lasting forever on the nose, lower legs and palate, the roof of the mouth cavity. Loss of movement, unable to move because of the pain swellings in the joints. Then mental disorder because the parasite affects the brain. And also we have visible impairment, loss of eyesight, loss of hearing also here because the nervous system is affected. Then heart problems. Then finally gummas. Gummas are nothing but soft cancerous growth. Cancerous growth on the surface of what is called external genital organs even on the surface of the body. Then it is called gummas. It's one of the major symptoms. So visual impairment, ear impairment, loss of eyesight, all being taking place in the case of syphilis. More dangerous when compared to gonorrhea. That's about the two bacterial diseases. We have to go for chlamydiasis and also we have other bacterial diseases. Okay, I'll write down one by one and discuss. The third bacterial disease is chlamydiasis, caused by a bacterium chlamydia trachomatis. It causes the disease what is called trachoma. What is trachoma? Now in the disease, now the parasite affects the columnar epithelium of the urinogenital tract, respective tract and conjunctiva. The epithelial cells of these three structures, urinogenital tract, respective tract and conjunctiva affected. Now the incubation period is about 2 to 3 weeks or even up to maximum of 6 weeks. Now the next one, lymphogranuloma venerium. Lymphogranuloma venerium, the same causative organism, Chlamydia trachomatis. What are the symptoms? Cutaneous, the skin, or mucosal genital damage. Cutaneous or mucosal genital damage. Causing damage to the mucosal layer of the genital organ. Now, urethritis. Urethritis means inflammation of urethra. That is called urethritis. And also, Endocervicitis. This is nothing but the inflammation of the cervix of the uterus, the neck of the uterus. Now, locally harmful ulcerations and genital elephantiasis, enlargement of the genital organs. Locally, it causes harmful ulcerations. Ulcerations means nothing but the development of sores on the surface of what we have the genital organs. So that's about what we have the symptoms, the same duration 2 to 3 weeks and after 6 weeks and both form that is chlamydiasis, lymphogranuloma, venerium, the same causative organism, the same incubation period. That's all about what we have the bacterial STI, we have to go for a few viral STI. Now let's see what are the different viral sexually transmitted infections. Number 1, genital herpes is caused by virus, herpes simplex virus. What are the symptoms? Sores in and around the vulva, vagina, urethra in female. That is related to the female sores. Just nothing but small blisters. Sores on or around the penis in male. So in female as well as males, we have the development of sores in and around the genital organs, external genital organs. Then pain during urination. 
and bleeding between the periods in the case of female. Now swelling in the groin notes both in male and females. Now this is pain during urination common to both male and female. Bleeding between the periods in the case of female and then swelling in the groin notes both in male and females. Now the incubation period is about 2 to 21 days, average 6 days. Now the next one, genital wars. It's caused by human papilloma virus HPV. Now the development of hard tumor on the external genitalia, cervix and perianal region around what we call the anus, that region is called perianal region, external genitalia, the external genital organs, cervix, nothing but the mouth of the uterus. Then the incubation period is about 1 to 8 months. Now the third one, hepatitis B, is caused by hepatitis B virus. It is transmitted through parenteral route, through blood transfusion or used in needles, etc. Now, fatty, tiredness, jaundice, because that one hepatitis B affects the liver, so all symptoms are mostly related to the liver, jaundice, liver cirrhosis, liver failure, these are all the common symptoms for hepatitis. The meaning for that one, inflammation of the liver. So, fatty, tiredness, jaundice, then fever, rashes, stomach pain, then liver cirrhosis, I mentioned about just the development of fibrous growth in the liver. Liver failure occurs in the later stage of what we call the development of the disease. The incubation period is about 30 to 80 days. I mentioned already what is incubation period. The entry of the parasite, the period between the entry of the parasite and the development of the first symptom. That is called what is known as incubation period. Now we have to go for one more viral disease and one back, sorry, one protozoan disease, one fungal disease. Okay. Now the last viral disease AIDS, you know the common disease. Human immunodeficiency virus caused by. Now we have the symptoms, enlarged lymph nodes, prolonged fever, prolonged diarrhea, weight loss, and finally night sweating. Even we have the development of opportunistic infections like candidiasis and also we have TB. Now the duration is two to six weeks, but people are living even more than 10 years. Now, According to World Health Organization 2017, it is estimated that nearly 1 million people are acquiring sexually transmitted disease per day. And we have India, the third largest HIV epidemic, with more than 2.1 million people living with HIV, living with HIV. That's about the fact related to AIDS. Now coming back to the fungal sexually transmitted infection, candidiasis, caused by candida and begins. So the infections you can find now the development of the fungus in the mouth cavity. So it attacks mouth, throat, intestinal tract, vagina. Then because of the fungal growth we have vaginal itching. Then abnormal vaginal discharge and pain during urination. There is no specific incubation period for this organism. The last one, the protozoan STI, that is trichomoniasis. That's the name of the disease caused by a flagellate protozoan trichomonas, trichomonas vaginalis. This is a flagellate protozoan. Now it causes vaginitis, inflammation of the vagina. Then urethritis, inflammation of the urethra. Then epidiademitis, the inflammation of the epidiademis, the place of storage of the sperms. Then prostatitis, prostatitis, so prostatitis, so actually this is, uh, okay, so prostatitis, it is nothing but the inflammation of the prostate gland in the case of male. Then we have greenish yellow vaginal discharge, itching and burning sensation. These are all some of the symptoms related to what we have actually, this protozoan STI. Now the incubation period is about 4 to 28 days. According to World Health Organization 2017, it is estimated that that is globally 1 million people globally acquire what is called sexually transmitted infection every day. 
Then if you are considering the nature of the statistical data of AIDS in India, India has the third largest HIV epidemic, third largest, third largest HIV epidemic in the world with 2.1 million people living with what is called HIV virus, living with HIV virus. That's about the fact related to the AIDS. Now, what is the role of an organization? Tamil Nadu Health System Project. This is a government organization. So, TNHSP. So, it is a unit of health and family welfare department of what is called government of Tamil Nadu. What are they doing? They are doing actually free screening of cervical and breast cancer. Free screening of cervical and breast cancer. The most common causes, the most common type of cancer in the case of female, cervical and breast cancer. So this government department is doing the free screening of what is called the presence of either cervical or breast cancer. So with this I concluded about what we have the sexually transmitted disease. We have to go further the next aspect. For example, cervical cancer, infertility, etc. Okay, thank you.